I talked about the SR-56 and a few other things in the past, I'm trying to say you expand your horizons, collect more than you do. I want to talk about Commodore calculators because there's a huge amount. Be careful with those. They'll fall all over the place. I've got most of my Commodores up here. That's what Richard's grabbing. You get the ones you need? No, I don't, I don't need any of them. Oh, okay. But they're up here. I've got most of them up here. You can look at at the break and all that kind of stuff. Most of us know Commodore, especially from, I know that historically the PET and all this stuff, Commodore 64, the Amiga, uh, all this kind of stuff, uh, the Amiga shirt that uh, David's wearing there. Uh, and I've got the little, cute little symbol off of various things. So I want to try to t go over most of the Commodore scientific models and try to give you a suggestion. Here are the ones I really think you should try to find on eBay. Okay. I already have them, so you can't, I'm not going to drive the price up for me. <laughs> Look, first of all, look at that. Commodore made watches, too. Hey, it's not a calculator, but hey, look, watches. No, I don't have one of those. They've got one of the red here. Got the little Commodore symbol on it, and then they had a later one there that was LCD. Who knew that Commodore made these watches? I didn't. And preparing this, you've got one in your pocket? No, but when I worked for Commodore in the early 1980s, the factory in Dallas I was at made watches. Hey. Never was it had. LCD by that it's time? LCD, yeah, because we got a liquid nitrogen delivery, but they used to make the displays. So we'd always wait outside to get a cup of it so we could play jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if, it, if you ever, does that one ring a bell? Uh, it's been a long time. <laughs> they were actually making, they had a side thing of making uh, animated pornographic LCD watch faces for somebody in the Orient. And oh, how oh, nice. Screen oh. Off, so. But in Commodore... <laughs> All right, let's go to calculators. I just wanted to say, hey, they made watches. So if you see a Commodore watch sheet, you may think about it. This, in my, as far as I can tell, this was the first Commodore calculator. It was a Bomar clone, the C110, a four-function machine. Had the same keypad as all the original Bomars. They just put Commodore's name on it. Scientifics began in late 73 through 74. Now, what am I going to call a scientific? After a first couple of false starts here, it needs to have trigonometry. Okay. The first one I'm going to call out here is this one. It's not really scientific, but the 1489 picture here lays the groundwork for many of the ones that will come. This was 72. And the groundwork it's laying is kind of the color scheme, the general shape, right? And that has a shiny black faceplate. A shiny black faceplate on it. It's got square root. Was dinner good? It's got Kim, Kim, was dinner good? Yes. Good, good. We had enjoyed it. We were just over at the steakhouse. Did they take the code? The yes, coupon? they did. Yes. I had a discount code for him for dinner. Okay, so again, that's not a scientific, but you see the red, white, and the blue buttons and stuff? This is the 4109B. What a, what a product name. 4109B. It's a slight variation of that 1489. I have no idea necessarily what the sigma button does. Maybe it sums when you hit the memory button instead of storing. Who knows? But it has a matte background faceplate, not a shiny. Okay. You don't think that's an exponent? I think I it's grand total. It's, I, grand totals maybe? Could be. Yeah. I, I have never seen this in the in the flesh, so I don't I haven't had a chance to play with it. Alright, here we go. Finally a scientific. The SR 1400. This is from 1974. So this is what, HP 45 vintage time? And you can see it's got most of the basic scientific functions. It's got uh, the trig and all that kind of stuff, it's right? And it still has it. the, um, it's got a 10-digit display, two-digit exponent. Mm -hmm. And again, it's defined by me as having trig functions, so it is scientific. It also comes in a version with a shiny silver faceplate. It reminds me of some HP models in the 2000s, which will go nameless, not to be mentioned in this room. This is, in fact, though, Commodore's red dot machine. Here's the silver version. You see where the red dot's going to be? Right there, and it turns on. When you put it into radians mode, the red dot turns on oh. underneath it. That degrees radians mode button right there makes that red dot turn on and off. It's it's hilarious. Leave that thing laying there. What's, the, what's that light doing on? All right, here we go. This is the SR36. It's also from 1974. Okay, it's essentially a repackaging of the 1400 into a different form factor the shape of which they're going to use for a couple of years. How do you get the inverse trig function? ARC, A-R-C, right next to it. It's oh, yeah. the old-fashioned way of Just like the HP-35. Yeah. Um, 
Note the square buttons. Do you see at the bottom you got the square button shape with the oval on the button? Right? So one couple of questions. First, why is that EXP button up there by all by itself at the top left? Look at it up there. That's for exponent, like yeah. enter an exponent. What on earth is it doing up there? Yeah. Did you say somebody forgot about it until the very end, I guess? <laughs> Here's another one. Where is x squared? You got reciprocal and square root. There's no x squared up there anywhere. Why well, do the y x2? Y2 yeah. 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 Why are the x? So why, why are the x2? Z? And one other question. Why is the minus key down there on the bottom row white? <laughs> Instead of blue like the other arithmetic operators. No, yeah. Somebody made it Because the other keys around there are white. I guess. That, that had to be it. But then again, sometimes color choices are not always the best. <laughs> I know that wasn't Tim. He argued strongly against it. But anyway. Okay. This is the other version of the SR36. And here all the buttons have the square shape. Uh, they certainly you can see a color scheme beginning here that's going to continue for some time, the red, white, and blue. Uh, perhaps leading up to the USA Bicentennial. That's what I probably would guess, right? And if you look, X squared finally got added on. They must have had some customers that were fussing, so they threw it up there at the top by the exponent button. And at least the, the minus key is blue. Right? So this is like version 2. Version 2. This is the SR37, not the 36, the 37. From late 74, early 75, many of these dates are total guesses. Nobody knows. And there's nowhere to find out that I have any idea. I guess I can try to open them all up and look for some date on the inside, but no idea. You should go to the Museum of Commodore Calculators website. I should start one, I guess. Uh, on the thumb drive, I think in my folder is an Excel file that has a reference of every model across the top and rows for every function. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Uh, and it's like 200 something rows of functions because as they get more specialized, they have some functions that are not on the others. So if you want to know, you don't have to madly scribble something down. If you want to know which ones have hyperbolics, find the hyperbolic row and go across. You can see yes, no. Um, my guess, I think this is a European version of the SR36. It's thicker and uses an industrial design that some later Commodores used. Well, it's red, white, and blue like the British flag. Yeah, that's how they sold it over there, I suppose, right? <laughs> this is the SR-1800 from 1976. On the table. It adds a green shift to it, and the green shift functions have a raised relief to them. Okay? It's a green VFD instead of the red LED display. It's kind of oddly shaped at the top. It kind of bulges outward. It really does. It's not a, a straight side. It bulges outward at the top but by the display. This is the function set here is used for quite a few models. It's put into many different form factors, but no real changes in what the features are. Uh, these two buttons up here at the top in blue, EE -E down and EE -E up, will change numbers like this. You put 480 and hit EE -E down and it becomes 4800 times 10 to the negative 01. It shifts the exponent and changes the mantissa. And the other direction would show 4801, 48 times 10 to the 1. So it's a poor man's version of engineering notation or something, right? So it's very strange. Commodore really thought that was great. Shows up on a ton of their models. It's a poor man's engineering notation, the SR-1800. This is the SR-6120R. If you see an R after the name of a model, that's a rechargeable version. Ones with a D are disposable. <laughs> Okay, so it tells you with the model name sometimes whether you can get a 9 volt battery or something and run them. I would try the D's if you have a choice, okay, because they're more likely to have a shot of turning on. Uh, as I say, R is rechargeable, D's disposable. Same exact function set as the SR1800, just a new package. That's a bit slimmer and they go back to the red LED displays. Uh, you can tell by the numbers on most of these whether they're mine or from the array of calculators. Uh, I, I took some of your pictures. I'm trying go see the Ray of Calculators website. It's great. Um, it has two memories this time, polar and rectangular and back, mean and standard deviation, and degrees radiance conversion. So a bit more feature set. This is the 4148 version 1. This one came from the Ray of Calculators. That's his number in the display up there. You see 6.48, you know it came from uh, the Ray of Calculators. It's a different key layout, key layout and shape, but it's the same feature set as the 1800, just rearranging and doing things slightly differently. 
This is the 4148 version 2. Okay. Oh, by the way, whoops. There is a 4148 that works on the price table. But it is a 9 volt, so it is a disposable, even though it doesn't have a D here. They weren't consistent. But that was courtesy of uh, Scott Reynolds, who sent that. Not even here. Oh, okay. All right, this is the version 2. It's got squarish shape to the buttons, but no differences to the previous models. Just, I don't know, more, who knows? Marketing has to justify their existence somehow. Sometimes that's right. This it is the. Has, it's looked like the, it looked like it has more memory. Uh, it's no, it had, one and it had two on the other one. Too. Oh, did it? it? Had two on the other. One. You're right. This one does have two. This is the European version, the 9120D. It's the exact same feature set, it's the exact same buttons, but it's thicker. I don't know why they were selling the thicker ones over in Europe, but they sure did. This also, is a, they've added somewhere somewhere between the beginning and where you are now. They added parentheses. That's true. The parentheses are up here on the top on this one. So they have been, they have been slowly adding a few features to it. That's a really bizarre one right here. It's a huge model. I've got it in the box top. Hard white plastic. It looks ugly as can be. It's a very unusual machine. It's thick. Why? No idea why somebody would make yet another incarnation of the 6120 function set. This is the 8120D. It's a smaller slimline version of nearly the same feature set in that 6120. A few things are missing, so it's a slimline version. No parentheses. I don't think it's got, um, does it have square root? Well, I don't logs. think so. so you can, if you got logs, you can always do square root. But nothing built in. So they There's took no away some fairly common things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why did the X.5? Yeah. It is missing polar rectangular and a few things like that, certainly from the previous one. Terrible on-off switch. You get a hammer and chisel it to move it over. Uh, finally, a different look. This is the 70, 7919. 7919. This one shows up on eBay fairly regularly. Okay, shows up on eBay. If you haven't checked eBay yet, Commodore calculators will probably find them all for you. And check the eBay UK site. They're more frequently over there. Uh, it's relative, relatively small size. This is an interesting function, the shift of the decimal key, 8-5. That will switch from showing eight digits of the Mantissa to five and two and back. So you don't get an exponent display in eight? You don't get an exponent display in eight. It will show you all the digits of the without the exponent, but the exponent's still there. It's just not showing you. I wanted to explain it because I was going to guess that it had conversions between base eight and base five. Yeah. Base five. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is the 7949. Ooh. This is on my wish list if you care to get me a present for Christmas because I have yet to successfully get one of these. It's that 7919, but they added a shift plane of green functions above all the keys to add a few more things in it. I'd really like to have one of those, but I haven't had one yet. Uh, there's no log. I mean, they have log, but they have a capital L in for natural log. L-O-G, lowercase, for common log. Capital L, lowercase n, for natural. Who, who figured? Go figure. Here we go. This is the 4912. This is a good basic scientific calculator. And they've got away from the red, white, and blue. This is a gray, you know, white, and black. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Jake's machine for keyboard efficiency. He, he, he doesn't know it yet. This is the one he really wants because one it has a per function. one keystroke one. per function. And it is a one key solution for population and sample standard deviations. Ooh. To my knowledge, that in the next machine are the only ones ever made. Or some, why it's important, I don't know, but one key to get population standard deviation and one key to get sample. It's the S and the S prime on the third row over there on the right. Wow. Okay. Now this one, ah, the 4912. This is also on my wish list for Christmas. This is the RPN version of the previous one. Ooh. What? 21. You said 12. I'm sorry. 4921. Actually, it says both. <laughs> oh, that's maybe that's why I read that. This is the 4921. Okay. This is an RPN. It's incredibly difficult to find. And I say you can donate it to me. I'll leave my address. It has a four-level stat, but does not replicate the T register when it drops. So it fills in with zero. Where was the end? Fills in with zero. Zero. Where's the end? Down in the bottom corner, the orange. It's not Int. Wide. Int. Int. Yeah. That's, a, that's a nice little machine. It doesn't have a lot of features in the sense, right? It's a good basic little scientific. 
Do they call the top level people? I don't know. Okay. Uh, most of the owner's manuals for these Commodores are on uh, the thumb drive. Jake uh, or, or Eric pulled them off of uh, Kath, Kathy, uh, Katie Wasserman's, Wasserman's site. Okay. All right, take a break from scientifics for a minute. Talk to financial calculators. This was their first one, the F financial, 4146. The display was floating. It was doing this through my iPhone as I was trying to take a picture of it. I never could get the entire display. Really bizarre. Floating point display, yes. Uh, it's a very strange approach to time value money calculations. There's a key for every specific compounding frequency. You want to do a quarterly calculation, there's a quarterly compounding key. You want to do semi-annually, what are the two days on the fourth row? That's 360 on one and 365 on the other. It has almost no math functions. Look at it. What math functions does it have beyond plus minus stuff, right? Percent, y to the x, and reciprocal. That's it. Nothing. No square root? No. I mean, it's, it's, it's like it's a desert. It's a desert. It has few math functions. An early version had white functions with a line across it, in between the stuff at the top, lest you get confused with the stuff below. It's DP. Decimal point. There's two percent keys on there. Oh, no, plus minus. Where? What? Oh, plus minus, yeah, plus minus. Here's the better financial model, if you happen to have it. This one's not a bad scientific model either, the 4902. This one has, again, the statistical distributions, linear regression, has some reasonably basic scientific functions. It doesn't have trig, but it does uh, the time value of money, cost sell margin. That's not too bad. Not too bad. I got one of those up here that works. It is odd, though, that it has an 11-digit display. You keep typing, you get 11-digit mantises on that thing. It's really weird. Why? I don't know. Uh, if you want a Commodore Financial, get that one. The desktop scientific Commodore, the 1540, that is rare, rare, rare. Uh, to my knowledge, those keys are essentially the PET computer keys. Okay? Look, it's already showing my net worth up there. <laughs> <laughs> Negative 74. 10 to the minus 74. Uh, this is a picture of it where the keys have not worn off. It's basic scientific stuff. It would go along well with the Rockwell and stuff like that over there. Uh, I did manage to finagle one and I got Philotic to buy it for me. It's still at his house. So I hope to eventually have one of these just because I've been looking for one for a long time. All right, back to calculators. This is the, uh, the, uh, the handhelds. This is a programmable. This is the P50. Mm -hmm. Terribly ugly, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Brown, white, and orange color scheme. It's rumored that the industrial designer later worked on the 39G+. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, a 24-step program memory. Why is it called the P50? <laughs> 50 no Marketing. 50 is bigger than 24. <laughs> Maybe it's 50, Maybe it's 50 but that won't work on the next one. You'll see. Uh, it is missing some basic, basic math functions, right? Take a look at that. I mean, it, it doesn't have a Y to the X key. I guess you write a program instead. Weird. Weird. Very weird. Four steps. What kind of program are you going to run? Not much. <laughs> You're going to program much. the Y to the X. It is a disposable yeah. nine volt battery. So, uh, um, this is the PR 100. Does the 100 <laughs> mean 100 program steps? Of course. No. It's 72. So why is it called the 100? I don't know. Uh, it's a sealed battery, rechargeable battery. So if you want a programmable Commodore, don't get that one. Uh, don't get that one. It's got a lot more functions. It's rarer, but it's still ugly. <laughs> Very ugly. Uh, the 9M function above the equal sign is really odd down there. You see the 9M above the equal sign in the bottom right corner? It will perform the next operation, plus minus whatever, on all nine memories. At <laughs> once. Let's process it. I guess, yes. <laughs> the Commodore uh, PRL, perhaps. Uh, some versions are very thick. I mean, that's how thick it is over in the UK version. The US versions are not like that. Really weird. Very strange. All right. Now the good stuff. So what we had had the good stuff yet? Yes, the good stuff. The 4190. Finally a scientific with a very extended scientific and statistical function set compared to what we've seen so far. This thing is packed. Okay? 
So Statistics, you... combinations, permutations, factorial, gamma, linear regression, uh, Gaussian, Poisson, and binomial distributions. Math, complex numbers, Simpson rule, numeric integration, trig, hyperbolics, even metric conversions. <laughs> yeah. Two data memories. And I love the color scheme. I mean, that's just a great, beautiful looking industrial design to me. There's the bottom set of keys. So I, can I get a ooh? Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, so you see the metric conversions, even BTU to joules. Um, alpha, beta, gamma are for the statistical distributions. If you need two arguments for a function or three, you store them in there and then it pulls them from it. And here's the top. It does have the gamma function up there above the uh, factorial. And the integration, you, um, you enter your data and keep pushing it in for Simpsons. This is a big brother to that 4190, the 9190. What's the differences? Well, the gray, white, black color scheme versus the colorful 4190. But it has log gamma rather than gamma. Somebody said, hey, that would be more useful to do log gamma rather than gamma. You get bigger oh, yeah. numbers up there, right? Put in 100. <laughs> and it has 10 data memories instead of 2. Wow. But the shift function contrast on this is better. You can see those shift functions better. There's the lower part. That's the screen. You can see the uh, conversions. And then here's the top. I mean, essentially it's the same. Some stuff's been moved around slightly, but it's essentially the same thing. All right, now the big boys. This is one of three giant models, the N60 navigation calculator on eBay. This is the one you'll probably find. There's two on there now, I think. One is a real expensive one, but this one is, uh, you know, Jeff Quick Falls, right? Got all these travel, air, flight, navigation stuff, all that kind of thing. But in the bottom uh, corner over here, it does have basic science functions. Sine, cosine, tangent, and all that stuff in that bottom corner of the screen. Uh, lots of navigation functions. A gray, white, and teal kind of color scheme. Lovely green display, 10 plus 2. There's the expensive one. A red prototype or something. It's been on eBay for a while with a high price. In my opinion, Mr. Seller. Defined high price. Several hundred dollars, four or five hundred, something like that. Three, four. Or something. All right, here's the other big one. This is the S61, the statistical powerhouse. Okay, how do you know if it's a statistical powerhouse? Look at the two buttons in the middle. It actually shows the distributions. It's not even labeled with a key function. It shows the curve and what area it's going to return. This one shows up less often on eBay than the N60, but it is findable. Lovely colored keys, does group statistics, has a switch for group one, group two. Tremendous math and statistical power. Has two types of normal distribution, chi-square, F, binomial, hypergeometric, Poisson, and two types of students' T distribution built into this thing. It almost certainly is the most powerful pre-programmed statistics calculator ever made, pre-programmed. It probably isn't one. It's non-programmable. Non-programmable. That's right. That's All a built euphemism. in. <laughs> it's a euphemism. I try not to do that. Um, here's the keyboard <laughs> down at the bottom. It's got gamma. It does have gamma. <clears throat> but you see what I mean about the keys? Just really, I think are very beautiful. I'm hoping that these pictures need to get onto Google. By the way, there aren't good pictures of any of these models. You search for it, you're going to get a tiny little junky looking picture. Somebody, please put this on a website. Let Google crawl or find it. Okay, so it'll show up, searches of the future. Here's the top. You see the chi-square, mm -hmm. F distribution, hypergeometric. With the burrito geometry. Okay. Great stuff, great stuff. Mm -hmm. Residual sum of squares, RSS. What's wow. the, the X hat and Y hat? Or? Uh, predict X, predict Y. Okay. For linear regression and stuff like that. Standard it's deviation got of X the inverse, and Y. It's got the inverse. Yeah. Uh, probability. Mm -hmm. It's really a great statistical machine, it really is. All right, this is the holy grail of math dedicated calculators, the M55. This is Velotic's holy grail as well. He's won one of these since he was a kid. Okay? And he has not tried to attack me to get the one I happen to have. It has error function, Bessel function. How do you say that next word? The care, polynomials. Matrix functions, two by two. Vector arithmetic, cross and dot. Ten constants available, including the speed of light. Nearly impossible to find. I have seen three of these in 20 years. Three. And one of those I happen to snag. So, I mean, if you see one of those, jump it. Wow. 
jumping. I think the last one I saw went for over 500 bucks. They just don't show up. They just don't show up. Here's the keyboard. Clear all memories. That's Cam. Bob, you can tell. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Tell Cam she's got a calculator button all of her. <laughs> and what's the power? Well, then you need to give me yours. <laughs> she needs a present, right? Now, what, what, now what's the power on these later ones? Are they still 9 volt battery? These are um, rechargeable. Three, three double A's inside. Uh, but anyway, you can see, right, decimal to octo. I mean, it's got, it's got almost mm -hmm. log gamma on this one up there on the uh, above the factorial key. What's a DVR-DV? Where? Above the zero. I think that's voltage ratio to, yes, to decimals. 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 What's this as a JX? Mm -hmm. Complex mm -hmm. arithmetic. So those are actually I. It'll do complex arithmetic on it. We're trying to determine if you're worthy. <laughs> <laughs> I try. It's just, um, I mean, there's all you got all these all these math things. It's, just, it's really wild. The small gamma so, yeah, so error gamma. function. Earth. 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 Yeah. Earth. It's got it's got it all. Oh, by the way, you can see this is a red dot version too. So. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's so expensive. The M55. Where's Bessel? Commodore also made. Let me back up. You want to see where Bessel was? Oops. Go back. Gear, probably, you know. yeah. Vessel's on there somewhere. But I bet he doesn't have the lamp. J. 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 Second row. J. New. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can see the determinant and inverse of the matrix over there. Two by two. Two by two. Commodore made some calculators even into the LCD era. This is the LC50, a lovely yellow LCD display. Uh, it's got quite a few math functions on it, but nothing ever compared to the M55 ever again. This is the LC50 or LC63R. Uh, you see two versions of this. Uh, this is an OEM version they made for sensor. See sensor on the bottom, but that is the Commodore calculator because there they are side by side. The LC63R and then the LC50. Those are hard to find on eBay. You find a four function version of one of those, same kind of scheme. This is a real oddity here. This is the LC4512, it uses AA batteries in the top, so it's much thicker up there than it is the rest of the time. There was a TI30-2 that did that, AA's at the top, it got real slim at the bottom. Um, but uh, some interesting color scheme, back to the red, white, and blue on that. Who knew they made a very odd time calculator stopwatch combo thing over there? <laughs> that was really worn, but uh, I guess if it sells. So which to own? I know you want them all. Sure. Yeah, come on. Namir, you want them simpler, all, don't you? Simpler. Why choose? Why choose? Have them all. Right? You deserve them all. You really do. <laughs> you have worked hard to get where you are. <laughs> all right. The M55 is, of course, the holy grail. If you can find that one and money is no object, get it. The M55. All right. The S61 is a pretty close second. If you see the S51, it's got nearly the same kind of stuff the M55 does, but what can you do? The N60 is on eBay right now. You can have that one tomorrow. Which one had the vessel for it? Was that even? That's the M55 had the vessel. What? How much are you asking for it? Not, not me. Not me. If you're going for a programmable, go for the P50. Don't worry about the one with the uh, uh, built-in batteries. Those keep leaking. Six hundred fifty dollars. Those keep leaking, and I've had two PR, P100s go because of it. But uh, why go programmable at all? It's only 24 steps. Who cares? Otherwise, the ones I really think you ought to hunt for, if you really, I'd like a good, nice Commodore. I know. Why would I say that? But suppose you really do, right? I would suggest that 4190 or the 9190. Those are the ones that finally expanded beyond that relatively stable feature set. They've got distributions. They've got the nice color scheme. Uh, the 4190 is colorful, while the 9190 is gray, white, and black, but they're both very good uh, from a scientific viewpoint. A lot of stuff that they've got in there. Nearly the same function set. And they're relatively easy to find, so I recommend you get one of those. Any questions on the Commodore universe? Yes, sir. Did they ever? Considering the use of the SR name, did they ever have a calculator called the SR60? They did. 
there was that uh, Compex or uh, That's it. That's it. somebody else had one that was called an SR60 that was a handheld, and then the desktop TI. Again, I do have these up here. Quite a few of them work. Uh, feel free to come up and bang on them. I'm going to leave them here. Uh, again, the, don't bang them on the wall. Bang on the calculator. Uh, there's, a, there's a much wider world out there. This is the ecumenical call. Uh, beyond the Hewlett Packards and even some of the TIs. And uh, Commodore made a lot of really good machines relatively inexpensively. And there's always you know, ones like this 4148 that, you know, if you happen to have this, you can't determine the height of the pole given the shadow and the angle. So this passes my test. It would have been a desktop of some kind. I, that I'm not aware of. I don't know. About 50 step or ridiculously by anybody, almost anybody saying that it's a small. It's being sold in number of That I don't know. I know the two handheld ones that were 24 and 76. They were the only big guy. Yeah. 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 Everybody with it and well, growing up, one of the reasons I know about Commodores is growing up, one of my good friends in high school's father worked for Sears, and he they carried Commodore calculators, and so he was able, that's what he got. Everybody else had Texas Instruments in high school, and so he was always picked on, nonconformist, non you know, I mean, I, terrible. And then one day we broke his calculator messing around with it. Always bothered me. His dad got it replaced, so he had the newer Commodore. So a couple of years ago, yes, Mark, I'm talking about you. I actually tracked down the one that we broke working and mailed it to him. <laughs> we haven't been in touch much, but I told him, hey, what's your address? I got a surprise coming for you. And uh, he was like, hey, you know, so I, I, hopefully I have evened the scale a little bit. But when you're 14, lots of things don't count, hopefully. Any other questions on them? I'm sorry for driving you through all these pictures and things like that. On the rechargeable ones, did they any of them have like a, a place where you can plug in the calculator in, into the wall, like these like the older HPs or TIs? They have AC adapter. AC adapters. Yeah, and many of these, of course, on eBay will not come with the AC adapter. Uh, oh, there's, there's three or four different styles of AC adapters, but look, I'm serious. If you go to eBay now, I know Namir found them. There's a, I think there's a 4190. On eBay right now, yeah, and there's always a P50 or there's a P50 that's yeah, there's worth a P50. it too. Yeah. And there's an N60. I mean, there's several of them out there. Look, keep an eye out. Who knows what the future could hold for you? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks.